responsibilities. Sorry, Council, which petition? 219. 219 she was in 219. Yes, sir. Yes, allow me kindly Mr. to make a very brief response to the submissions that have been made in response to the application. Uh, first and foremost, we begin with the prohibition order. This is not a negative order, but a positive order that commands certain things uh, not to be done. And therefore, this being the case, it is an order that can actually be stayed because it prohibits the collection of the levy and therefore that is a positive act that is actually prohibited. Uh, again, the regulations that we've talked about, these are of a, a thousand regulations. The impact they have on the operation of the government is huge. It cannot be gainsaid because regulations are actually the administrative arm of the government. It operates through regulations, not, not the statutes themselves. So the effect is actually huge, and therefore it needs an interim protection. In the case of Gatirao Peter Munya versus Dixon Mwenda Kivinji, the Court of Appeal was standard that a conservatory order would be issued in such circumstances as to safeguard government operations. And it goes without again saying what has been stated by each of the persons who have opposed that there are operations that are going to be affected, including what is the effective date of the cessation of collection of the levy? Is it from today or is it from the time the act was enacted? Tomorrow, there will be an avalanche of Kenyans going to KRA to say, give back my money. The following day, you are not given the money because there is a procedure that has to be followed. They will be in the court with the contempt applications. So this is a real danger that is uh, facing everyone in the government who must comply with this particular order. There has been submissions as to whether you should make an order to refund. Again, this points to why we need a stay. Yes, there may be a refund at one time in time, but it can it be tomorrow. It cannot be tomorrow. It has to be within a given period of time after systems are adjusted, advice is given, and appropriate uh, measures are taken, including, and I don't agree, with the submission that the law cannot be rectified. That we leave to Parliament. If it has its means and ways of rectifying the law within the 45 days without breaching the Constitution, so well, so good. If it cannot, then it has to find a way of going round. With those remarks, I urge that you grant us the 45 days. You are not in any way negating your order. It is the practice of our courts. The first court of instance would stay its orders to allow parties to go to the second court, third court, and, th and fourth court, if that is necessary. It has happened not only in civil cases, but also in cases such as this one. So you are not negating the order, you are not contradicting yourself, you are not uh, trying to carry on with what are a constitutional orders. It is actually the practice of the court to afford the parties to go to the next court, and especially where we are saying, allow us to make a formal application. Thank you. Maybe before you sit, Mr. Morogare, yes. you could just, uh, why, why 45 days? Uh, it, is a few, it is almost what we need. Number one, we have said if, we have to stop this. We have to make the necessary adjustments. Number two, today is the 28th of uh, November. Most entities possibly have deducted either today or the day before to pay salaries. Um, that needs to be looked at because we may have to stop some of the operations that are going on. It's also not speculative that there may be contracts entered into as far as these funds are concerned. If that is the case, you really have to know how to rego out of those contracts without again facing an avalanche of cases and arbitrations regarding breaches of contract. So that's why we need the 45 days. My lords and ladies, I'll start by addressing the issue which have been, uh, is the, my, the Remind learned lady name, has asked. Your name. This is Mr. Gaya Ocheng for the Kenya Revenue Authority. You have asked why 45 days? 
The reason why we are going for 45 days is because application for refund carry us 30 days to make a decision. So if you're given 45 days, that means that we'll have sufficient time to not only respond to the applications, but also to ensure we have moved the court sufficiently to deal with that. I'll go to the next issue raised by Learned Council Ogada on the issue of being told that a declaration of unconstitutionality cannot be suspended. Nothing can be further from the truth, my lord. Petition number 39 of 2017, LSK versus KRA, 39 of 2017, the court placed the threshold for the same and said, the decision whether to delay the application of a declaration of a nullity should therefore turn on not a consideration of the role of the court and the legislature, but rather the consideration listed earlier relating to the effect of the immediate declaration on the public. And that is what we are asking today. KRA has come before you and telling you the effect of that declaration. And the, the issue of suspension has also been done before. In civil application number 47 of 2023, Judith, KRA versus Judith Kirago, where the stay with regard to the declaration with regard to section 4A and 4B was issued. So we are not telling, what you are asking for is not a novel issue. Suspension of declaration has been done before and it's recognized by law. Finally, the ODEC on the effectiveness, effective date of unconstitutionality also state that this court has that mandate and has that obligatory jurisdiction to issue order suspending the declaration. And that is what we are here before you, asking you. We're telling you, Mr. Ogada's clearly enlightened that he wants an order of reimbursement. And we're asking you, no, kindly give us that reprieve. Stop us from those applications for the time being. Only 45 days, my lord. That is all from Kerry. OK. Uh Thank you very much. We'll consider those arguments. But before we give any further directions, there is a ruling to be delivered. Mr. Asa, Dr. Bargoria. You are lucky you've come when our blood sugars are low. Otherwise, <laughs> we ha would have issued warrants the way we act in Kibera. If you don't appear on time, we go and look for you. Thank you. So, so, sorry, sorry, my lords and my lady. Um, I was at the court of appeal, and my client was waiting for, for me, so we apologize for that. Thank you. Uh, but we came in when you read the main judgment. Yes, Justice Mayoli will read the decision of the court. Okay. This is the ruling in respect of the contempt uh, application dated 4th of July, 2023, where wherein the petitioners uh, sought uh, for the court to determine whether Mr. Daniel Kipto Bargoria, the Director of, uh, General of Energy uh, and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, that's EPRA, is in contempt of the orders of the court issued <coughs> on the 30th of June 2023, which had temporarily stayed the implementation of the Finance Act 2023. The court had oral submissions from Mr. Issa Mansur, counsel for the alleged contemner, that is Mr. Bargoria, and one of the petitioners, Senator Okia Mtata. It is right that, a, that court orders are not made in vain, and a party against whom an order is directed must obey it, the authority being Kyoga Holias and others, uh, where the court defined a contempt of court as conduct that defies the authority or dignity of a court. The nature of contempt, of contempt of court was described in Stuart Robertson and Her Majesty's Advocate as follows. It's an English decision. Contempt of court is constituted by conduct that denotes willful defiance of or disrespect towards the court or that will willfully challenge or that willfully challenges or affronts the authority of the court or the supremacy of the law, whether in civil or criminal proceedings. We have cited at length the decision of the Supreme Court in Republic versus Ahmad Abolfadi Mohammed and another, where the court explained the reasons or gave the rationale for punishing, why courts uh, punish contempt. And again, uh, uh, sorry, in, this, in, in the second passage that we have cited, and I think I can read it, 
the Supreme Court ex explained uh, or set out the standard of proof required to convict an alleged contemnor for contempt of court and the rationale for this standard as follows, and I quote, we are also conscious of the standard of proof in contempt matters. The standard of proof in cases of contempt of court is well established. In the case of uh, Mutitika versus Baharini Farm Limited, the Court of Appeal held that, in our view, the standard of proof in contempt proceedings must be higher than proof on the balance of probabilities, almost, but not exactly beyond reasonable doubt. The standard of proof beyond reasonable doubt ought to be left where it belongs, that is, in, the criminal, in criminal cases. And it is not safe to extend it to an offense which can be said to be quasi-criminal in nature. The rationale for this standard, the Court of Appeal continued to state, the Supreme Court state, continued to state, is that if cited for contempt and the prayer sought f is for committed to jail, the liberty of the contemnor will be affected. As such, the standard of proof is higher than the standard in civil cases. This power to commit a person to jail must be exercised with utmost care and exercised only as a last resort. It is of utmost importance, therefore, for the respondents to establish that the alleged contemnor's conduct was deliberate in the same stand, in the sense that he or she willfully acted in a manner that flouted the court order. And in this case, the question we are asking is the same one that was asked uh, in that case, whether the um, uh, respondent or contemnor or alleged contemnor willfully disobeyed the court's order. The two related ingredients of willful disobedience and no, uh, knowledge uh, of willful disobedience and knowledge of the order are critical in a successful contempt application. In the past, it was held by superior courts that for an applicant to succeed in contempt proceedings, he must prove personal service of the subject orders and the attendant penal notice upon the alleged contemnor. That was in Nyamogo, the case of Nyamogo and uh, Kenya Post. In recent years, however, superior courts have stated that where the applicant is able to demonstrate awareness by such contemnor of the orders and not necessarily personal service of the order upon the contemnor, such awareness is sufficient. Uh, notably, the courts emphasize the high degree of proof required as exemplified by, uh, in the exhortation, in the exhortations of the, of the Court of Appeal in the Mutitika, which I've already uh, read. Turning to the factual issues in this case, it is not in dispute that on 30th of June 2023, this court issued an interim stay uh, at interim stage upon presentation of petition, an order at interim stage upon presentation of petition 181 of, 181 of 2023 as follows. This matter coming up on 30th June 2023 for directions on the notice of motion dated 29th June 2023 before Honorable Justice M. Thande Upon considering the same, it is hereby ordered, one, that the application be served today, 30th June 2023, upon all parties, two, that responses be filed and served by 4th July 2023, three, that I am satisfied that the application meets the test for conservatory orders, and I do grant prayers two and three of the application until 5th July, when the matter is scheduled for mention for directions. Before we proceed, it would be opposite to put uh, the foresaid in context, uh, uh, in the context of the matter before the court. At the time of the filing, the respondents uh, captured in uh, petition number 181 of 2023 were the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury and Planning, the Attorney General, the National Assembly, and the Speaker of the National Assembly. The Commissioner General, uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, the Senate, Consumer Federation, Federation of Kenya COFEC and Kenya Export Floriculture, uh, Horticulture and Allied Workers Union were, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, the respondents, this was part of the respondents. And uh, the final party as a respondent uh, was the Kenya Export Floriculture, Horticulture and Allied Workers Union. Uh, these two, latter two, were uh, interested parties. The specifics of the conservatory order issued by the court uh, were that pending the determination, hearing and determination of the application, that must be the extracted order, and or the petition, the Honorable Court is hereby, hereby issues a conservatory order suspending the Finance Act. Pending the hearing and determination of the application and or petition, 
The Honorable Court hereby issues an interim order of prohibition prohibiting the respondent and interested parties or their agents, howsoever, acting from giving effect to the Finance Act. The thrust of the petitioner's case against the alleged contender is that he published a press release setting out the increase in the price of petroleum products following the coming into force of the Finance Act that the effect of the press release was to notify the public on changes, the changes to fuel prices effective 1st July 2023 in compliance with the revised VAT rates from 8% to 16% on petroleum, petroleum products, the finance bill having been assented to by the president on 26th June. Mr. Issa pointed out that neither the alleged contemnor nor EPRA, that is, um, the one with the long name, were a party to the proceedings at the time the court issued the orders on 30th June as were yet to be joined to this and joined to be these proceedings. And that on 30th June, the alleged contemnor was simply discharging his duties as the Director General of EPRA by issuing a press release in a timely fashion as has always been the norm. Thus, the alleged contemnor stated that he was being prosecuted for his effectiveness. Senator Mtata arguing that um, after the court issued the order, he had proceeded to serve it on the alleged contender on the same day via his WhatsApp number and email address along the petition. That despite being served, the alleged contender declined and or neglected to recall the press re release. As explained earlier, the two ingredients necessary for a finding of con contempt are knowledge of the court order, which the alleged contender denied, and willful disobedience. On the former, the alleged contemnor argues that neither he nor Epra were a party to these proceedings. Evidently, the said argument is true. But nevertheless, reviewing uh, the document exhibited as and marked as uh, 0005, it is clear that uh, there was a WhatsApp conversation between Senator Omtata and the alleged contemnor, of which the latter does which the latter does not dispute. What is uh, contended by the alleged contender is that at the time the court issued the order, he had already issued the press release in discharge of his duties as Director General of EPRA. A cursory look at the WhatsApp extract indicates that the order accompanying documents were sent, were sent to, the, to the alleged contender at 11.38 p.m., presumably on 30th June 2023. <coughs> A further perusal of the alleged contemnor's response, particularly the annexure DKB2, shows that the order of 30th June was issued at 14.25 hours. This court takes judicial notice that the alleged contemnor issued the press release through EPRA's official, uh, formerly Twitter, X account handle at 18.11 hours. What emerges from the foregoing is that despite the court's order having it been issued in the afternoon of 30th June 2023, it was not until close to midnight on the 1st of July 2023 that the alleged contemnor was served with the order. Consequently, by the time he released the press, uh, by the time he issued the press release, there was no way that the alleged contemnor could have known about the order. From the facts and the evidence, we find and hold that the Finance Act, having been assented to by the President, took effect on 1st July 2023. The alleged contemnor, in the performance of his duties as a Director General of EPRA, issued a press release to inform the public of the changes in fuel prices. We hold the con that the contemnor did not have knowledge of the order by the time he issued the press release. Further, the petitioners have not put forth any evidence that shows willful disobedience of the order as was held in uh, um, Ahmad Abul Fadi's case, the standard of proof in contempt applications is high, and the petitioners have failed to surmount uh, uh, this burden. Uh, for the reasons we have set out, we find that Mr. Daniel Kipur Bargoria is not guilty of contempt. We dismiss the notice of motion dated 4th July 2023, uh, and Mr. Bargoria is discharged from these proceedings. That is the judge ruling of the court. Uh, we are most obliged, uh, Melody and Malot. Thank you for your work. Okay, um, we, we need to deliberate on the application for stay, and we will resume at 3 o'clock.